Hey y'all, welcome back to the ranch. I'm Jared Paul, and today we're gonna get to pruning up my sweet birch forest planting. Um, it had some rough times coming out of dormancy, transitioning from indoors in the uh, basement greenhouse to the outdoors this year. So I think we lost definitely one tree. Um, so I'm not actually sure how many are left in the planting, but um, we'll get into that. But before we do, I wanted to pull my broskies and broskets. All right, bonsai people, I have a conundrum. So I had this planting in a seed tray and originally just this Italian wisteria, ash tree and maple, all from Europe, seeds collected there last summer. Um, originally those were the only ones in this planting. And then they uh, went through a period of dormancy through the winter, came out, boom, boom, leafed out. It was exciting. And I had thrown some what I thought were failed seeds of Delonyx regias in here just to not waste them. And then I have one, two, three, four that have popped up. Okay, so now I'm in Connecticut, Northwest Connecticut. So um, it is starting to drop into the 50s at night. Seven high 70s, low 80s during the day, you know, so it's been okay for these guys. But this is what I want to pull with you with. Do I risk these young trees and transplant all the Delonics into their own pot and uh, transition them inside since this is not a climate where they could just grow outdoors year round? Or do I take out the three older trees? that might have a higher survival rate, but I only have one of each from Europe. A very special trip, our first time there. So, um, but they might, they might have a high success rate of being transplanted in like maybe a nicer pot. Or do I take them all inside? Do I do nothing? Okay, so in the comments below, that's what I want from you, my friends, please. Let me know your opinion. I won't hold you to it. I'll pull the masses and I'll probably do the mathematical thing where, okay, if the majority went this way, that's the route I'll take. So let me know your opinion. I am torn. I love the Delonyx Regia, but I also am obsessed with those three trees. Um, so I guess they have equal importance to me. But anyways, sweet birch forest planting. That's what's come up on today's episode of Jarhead Bonsai. Right, so let's take a little walk down. I want to show you the uh, the progress with my future rooster Carl and his girlfriend Petra. So, if you haven't been following, Laura, Franny, and I were paddleboarding one day, and we normally have six chickens and an anaconda duck, and we we're paddleboarding one day across at the uh, state park pond. And we come up to our car, and there's just two little baby chickens. <laughs> and we're like, what the hell is going on here? So we ask, you know, yell to a couple of different groups who are around, like, picnicking. And we're like, you know, these are chickens? Thinking maybe, I don't know, they brought them to make their lunch or something. I don't know. We get all different cultures <laughs> that come around here for the weekend. So... Anyways, they're like, no, we think that someone just, like, dropped them off. So, this one lady was nice enough to catch them. And before I knew it, Laura and Franny were in the car, one with each, a chicken in each hand. And they're really growing up. So, on the right here, this red one, that's Petra. We believe she's a female. And on the left, the one that has a beard like me, that's Carl. And the reason why his name is Carl is because the lady who caught them and handed them to the to uh, my girls, she said, if there's a boy, you have to name it Carl. <laughs> For whatever reason, we died laughing about that, and we pretty much do every day. We call him Carl. But he's starting to try and cock-a-doodle-doo, so in the morning he makes absolute crazy noises. It sounds like an animal being choked. It's not quite the rooster cock-a-doodle-doo yet but he's got some really nice coloring. I've never had a rooster. We've only gotten feminized uh, 
eggs or just the females that were guaranteed from the store because you know you don't need a rooster you just we want the eggs you know so uh i guess now we'll be making some baby chickens huh carl so they're still too little to let out with the rest of the flock because this flock is badass they've survived raccoon and um weasel attacks so there's no way i would put these babies out there they would just get mauled so eventually we'll probably let carl roam freely during the day around the property and then this will be his house this little separate coop and petra will integrate into the other uh with the rest of the flock so that she could lay eggs and stuff and the way you do that when you introduce chickens into a flock apparently you do like a diluted apple cider vinegar spray so that they all smell the same and yeah because the term pecking order, it comes from, they peck the hell out of each other. And like if there's one chicken that stands out or they think is weak, they'll peck it in the back of the head until it dies. I've had a few flocks before this one and they're just brutal with each other. These guys, maybe because they grew up as, as babies together, they've just been kind. But... All right, on to pruning. All right, y'all, so the front looks pretty good. And this is the side that's been actually facing me on the deck, but the back is treachery. So we have one dead tree. That thing basically just wilted up. Two. Three. I'm, I'm just pulling these off because they rotted from their root system. And, okay, well, this one was more established, but even still. Ugh, lost four trees. So this year, I am going to definitely do something differently. Um, the basement greenhouse was a fail. And I just think that it was because I didn't have my lights on a timer, so I maybe left the full-spectrum lights on too long, coupled with uh, there being not a really good airflow down there. I don't know, for whatever, whatever it's worth, I, uh, I learned some lessons. <laughs> All right, so let's see what we do have here. Oh, here's another one up front, five trees. Okay, so one, two, three, four. Okay, so we have the most unlucky, most faux pas number possible in a group planting as a bonsai. <laughs> Uh, what do we want to do? Do we want to take one out? Or do we just, we'll leave that, and then next time we repot, we'll take one out and make it a specimen. Deal. It's a deal, guys. So, um, you know, for the sake of the trees that remain, we're going to leave this thing fugly, so it's completely lopsided. I have half the pot empty, and there's four trees. So it's wrong all around, but we'll get over it. All right, so I'll start with raising the canopy. We'll see where we want to have the established trunk line. Any really low branches, I'm just going to remove. I'm not going to think about it because I don't want them. I already know that. I'd like to have about you know, five, six inches of trunk and then establish a canopy here. These things definitely like to grow low branching and like multiple trunks and lots of volunteers coming up from the base. One of the things I've noticed about birch. So I'm just going around and taking off the bottom branches of all of them before I'm even looking at the canopy. I probably won't do too hard of a pruning. Oh, here's a ladybug. I think it was a dead lady bug. <laughs> I 
same killer. Okay, so, so this is typically four inches, so I'll take this one out. So now we can see the trunks. So we have a dominant one here, medium size, and then two little babies. At least they survived. So there really isn't that much branching yet. Um, I have a lot more development with my river birch than I do with these sweet birch, but they're really pretty. I like the leaf. Looks like the new, new growth during summer comes out red has a green rim and then greens up and the uh, the new branching actually has a red hue to it too so that's like something nice and unique so I'm just gonna bring it back to if there is a branching out point on the branch I'm just gonna bring it back to the node right before it and leave enough room for dieback I'll probably take it back much further in the future but for now I don't want to absolutely disrupt all of its growth so we'll see if we can get some uh, early, early branch development and branching. So at first, when you do the pruning on these, you leave that room for dieback. It's going to look, you know, rather ugly. It's not something you would want to display. Um, but a lot of the bonsai techniques leave your tree looking rough for nine months out of the 12. It's just, it is a part of the process. And that if you're new and you're getting into it, you're going to have to accept that, like, okay, so maybe I'm just um, overgeneralizing and maybe you didn't think like this, but like for me, like before I actually started to learn about bonsai and get into it, like I just assumed that the tree looked good all of the time. And like it just looked better, you know, the longer it was alive. And I realized that there were processes with the pruning back and, you know, the repottings and things where they go through rough phases and they're just not attractive at all. And, you know, I mean, not everything's a display piece all the time and that's cool, I'm just, I'm just saying, if you asked me before I actually got into bonsai, I would have I would have said, you know, yeah, it's a, a really attractive tree, ornamental thing. You put it inside. I would assume it's inside for some reason, and uh, it looks good all the time. I would have no idea that you have to do all this stuff to it. So I don't know. For me, I enjoy like watching like when this thing starts to bud back and give some new growth for late in the season. I'm going to be like, that's so cool to watch. It really is. But, you know, if you just, somebody who doesn't appreciate bonsai or trees or doesn't really pay attention to it, if you're like, oh my gosh, look at this budding back, they'll be like, oh, that's great. That stump with a few branches and some leaves coming out of it looks awesome. Obviously being facetious. <laughs> so this one actually has some nice branching going on early on. I'm just going to take out some of the overgrowth. like that. A couple of videos to watch after this. Sam Dope, the bonsai bloke, has one out there. And somebody else. Maybe Todd Tropicals. I'm not sure. 
you know, you get the notifications along with everything else, and I just clear them out, and I can't remember anything ever, so. <laughs> It's odd that I chose to take the smallest one and leave it the tallest, but honestly, that gives it the most advantage to um, grow thicker. So I will leave these two rather undisturbed, whereas I took a bunch back from these guys. All right, y'all, so uh, that's gonna do it. Very short pruning, but I do need your info, your input on the Delonyx Regia and the European deciduous trees. So let's take a look at this bad boy. I'll spin it around for you. Oh, Grow Bonsai, G-R-O Bonsai. He also has a video out, so. Sam Doge, the Bonsai Bloke, and Grow Bonsai. Looking forward to watching them today. I have a nice open afternoon before soccer, and Laura has a bunch of conference calls, so I'll probably just hang out by myself, maybe with my grand kitty, watch those videos, and um, learn something new. Anyways, that's going to do it today for us here at the ranch, y'all. I hope you enjoyed yourselves. Um, sweet birch, forest planting. Little babies now. They're only about a year and a half old. Actually, they're exactly a year and a half old. <laughs> uh, so in the future, I see them uh, really looking cool. We'll have a planting of three and one next time we repot. So Jared Paul, taking off. Please uh, like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. Take care, y'all.